the formal way of writing out the, the model and the hypothesis that we're going to do by means of the sort of the thoughts I already initiated in, in, in quite some detail, actually, in my motivating example. The way we're going to spell it out more statistically, more formally, is in the following way. We are going to assume, consider, you could say, a model. That's how we say it in, in statistics. I'm back. Um, we consider the model here that each individual observation, yij, considered as a random variable, it's not going to be the same each time. Next time we do an experiment, next time we sample a person in, in a group or whatever we are measuring, it will come up as a different number. That's the is sort of the, the core of our statistical thinking. However, we're going to split it a bit like the regression, or in fact a lot, if you want, like the way we, 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 we wrote out models in the regression setting last time. We are going to say that we have an overall level. That is what corresponds to the overall average, you could say. Then we have a contribution from each group an individual contribution, sort of a mean contribution, an expected contribution of the position, of the level of the group, that is estimated by this one. And then finally, we know, of course, that just looking at the group means and the overall mean is not telling the complete or full story about the data. That would be a naive way of setting up a mathematical model for the situation at hand. So. This corresponds to the individual deviations from the group means within each group. So basically, there are, we have some model terms expressing, sort of corresponding to these numbers that I was playing around with. And the core assumption of today in analysis of variance is the same as the core assumption for small sample sizes that we did back in seven, chapter 7 and 8 that we're going to assume a normal distribution for the errors here. If it's not true, we can use simulation techniques, right? But the, the key theory built up around this is based on an assumption of normality. The model is written out again here. Maybe you could say that, that the expected value of an individual observation is given by the overall level plus the contribution for each group. You may sometimes find a notation which is also a valid notation simply using a mu i there. That you might come across this notation. So just having a mu 1, mu 2, mu 3, that's one notation. Or you can have an overall mu, I'm just saying, and then the individual contributions, which then add up to zero. That's the two different ways of, of talking about this. Both are valid. I'll, I'll focus on this one, but the, you, you may meet the other one also. Then, if you focus on this way of putting it, the hypothesis we want to test in the outset is the following. We want to test the hypothesis that there are no individual group contributions. Maybe I should say this is the same as having that each of the groups essentially have the same means. If I'm, if I'm going to sort of just have the other way of, of, uh, of making a formal notation of this, it means that there is only the overall leverage in, level in play. And on average, none of the groups are different from the shared level of the data, right? None of the groups are on average different. That's my null hypothesis. That's the one I want to test. If I compare four groups, I want to test, are they the same or are they not the same? Are they not the same? So the alternative would be that for at least one group, at least one group should be different from something else, right? That's one way of putting it. Maybe all of some of the groups are the same, but the alternative would be that at least one is different. Could be more. We don't know at this point. That's the overall hypothesis that we are going to test. This was the second part, so we jump. 